Hello, I'm Nadia Strathen and I'm your design consultant and thank you for joining me for the second part of your design consultation family room uh, video. Okay, now uh, just a reminder of this is the consultation that we're working with, this beautiful open plan family room or if you decide to use it as your open plan living space. Okay, so at this point you would have printed off all of the all the sections of your design consultation so everything will be printed off and so that means that you would have printed off your um, living uh, space um, consultation as well and I have printed mine off and when I print it off I, this is what I do I print it off double-sided you can see I do it as a double-sided thing and the reason why I print off as I explained in the last video is that if um mobile um items like this like the um your your uh, laptop or your ipad etc they run out of charge but once you've got the high co hard copy you've got it and you can make notes on it can you see like i make notes on mine things that i uh, ideas i get or things i i need to do so i can make notes on it so this is really important that you put that you print everything off now this as a uh, consultation, very, very important for you to realize um, that this consultation, even though it's open plan, we are dealing with this part of the, of the um, room, this part here, there's a uh, living space here, this family living space where people can relax and talk and just really enjoy each other's company. And also this little part here where they have two snuggler seats. Snuggler seats, you can fit two people in or one person can actually lounge leisurely on for themselves, but it's a sort of nearly intimate space. The, the part going further back where you can see the dining area, that is for another consultation because that deals with the dining room and also the, you can see a kitchen area there. So there's a dining room and a kitchen kitchen area there. So that's for another consultation or altogether. This one just deals with this first half of it, which is the seating area and also uh, all the seating area and the actual family room element of this consultation. Okay, so that is what we're dealing with today, looking at the elements and um, the comfortable sofas and um, snuggler seats, which are very luxurious and really, really comfortable. Very important for you to um, not to, if you're going to cut back, if you have a smaller space and you're going to cut back on anything, please don't cut back on that sofa. That is um, to have a really comfortable sofa. It's very important, um, especially in a family room setting. It's a place where people can relax, fall asleep, have a nap, have a heart to heart. So it's very important. Um, you can, there's various different interiors that you can use within something as comfortable as that. Um, and you will see that um, um, the sofas that I have chosen, I have recommended for you, um, they, those sofas, um, when you go to those shops for the sofas, they will let you know that you can either have a feather interior. Now, a feather interior is a high maintenance interior um, because you have to plump those cushions every single day in order for them to be at their maximum sort of um, productivity for them to be really comfortable okay or you can have a fiber which gives you the comfort um yes it, it's good to plump it once a day but you can get away with plumping it you know sort of every other day or you can have foam it just depends if that's the feel that you want which is a bit more rigid and you doesn't need any sort of maintenance at all. So wherever you purchase them from, they will tell you that you do have the options of the interiors for these, but it depends, everybody's different in what they find comfortable. Um, so they, if you find foam comfortable, cause you like a really firm seat, then go with foam. If you like fiber, like for instance, in my home here, um, my seat interiors are fiber. Um, because it gives me the support, but it's also, um, it's softer, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite comfortable, it's not a quite as hard as, as foam, um, but the back cushions are actually feather. If you have allergies, obviously I would say go for the fibre, 
don't go for feather. You can get fibre in the seats and in the backs. You don't have to go for uh, feather at all because um, I do realise a lot of people do have allergies, but I've got feathers in, in my back cushions, okay? So I can really snuggle back into them. Um, so that's really important um, to um, really focus in on that and to um, get a really, really good quality, the best quality you can possibly afford. And when it goes it comes to choosing your beautiful sofa and your chairs as well. As you can see, I've got a snuggler. Um, some people may find that um, they don't have, maybe you don't have the space for um, a large sofa. Definitely get the snuggler. Um, a snuggler at the very least or a two-seater sofa and a snuggler, um, maybe you, you that will work for you. Um, um, depends on the space that you've got to fit this in. But a snuggler is a wonderful seat, okay, because it means two people can enjoy that seat together. Um, then there are other elements like this beautiful country, um, a sort of a traditional country button back little chair there which is a lovely firm chair. So if you find that you want a nice soft sofa, you can go for a nice firm um, seat in the in the form of this sort of button back little country um, chair, armchair that works. And then you've got these uh, sort of more upright um, sort of chairs there with these lovely wooden um, backing to them. So they're beautiful chairs as well that you can go with. Now, uh, when it comes to the key, one of the things you will notice, and um, I don't want people to come along and say to me, oh, there's a UK key and there is a US key. Why have you done that now? Um, as I say, I'm in the UK and so all the suppliers in the UK are not the same as the suppliers you'll find in the US or the, or the Americas, okay? So I've got a key for the UK and a key for the US as well. The suppliers that I've found and I've sourced, um, they produce pretty much, and in most of the cases, exactly the same item, they just have different names for them. But there will be some um, um, variations, maybe in the sizing, there's a little variations in the sizing, but you will still produce this scheme. It will overall look near as damn it. It will look the same as this. Okay, it will look the same as this. Now, something I need to um, uh, let you be aware of on here. You can see um, UK here, and they've got the US here. So you've got the UK with their products in red. It tells you the supplier or the manufacturer of the product. And then in, in blue, you can see the website that you can go on and you can order all the samples. As I said, please give yourself at least two weeks to order the samples. Um, sometimes things are not in stock and it might take up to two weeks. If you want them quicker, then I say go to the showroom. Go to the showroom and collect your samples. Sometimes when you collect the samples, like the samples of the flooring, um, you may find that you can get a bigger sample. And also, if sometimes you order it online, there's a charge. They levy a charge because they have to pay for the postage, obviously. But if you go into the showroom, it won't cost you anything. You can take it away. And you also, maybe you'll be able to take away a bigger piece as well. So a piece of flooring. Now, when it comes to the paint samples, obviously, you will need to go and collect that paint sample yourself. Okay? Collect the paint sample in the form of a match pot or um or a sample pot whatever you want whatever your store calls it now in those pots you get an awful lot please do not get all those match pots and come away and then start doing big squares of um you know uh colors on your wall so you end up with lots of squares of colors on your wall that will not be encouraging especially because you have to use the space while you get gathering all this information together what you need to do is to get a very large piece of paper. Now, you can get an old piece of wallpaper, a whole roll of old wallpaper, and on the reverse of it where it's blank, I'd say cut off a large piece and paint your colour on that, then get some masking tape and then stick that piece of paper on the wall so you can see what it looks like. 
and then when you have people come to visit your home you can take the paper down and your home still looks presentable um, whilst you're putting the scheme together okay so paint the color pieces on the wall as you can see on here can you see here on the ceiling something very unusual that's been done and it works very well we have two colors on the ceiling we have a blue lovely sort of sky blue and we also have um, the white so you are going to be sticking the color on the ceiling okay so you're going to be sticking um, a sheet of blue on the ceiling and also um, if you're if you've got white already that's fine if your ceiling isn't exactly brilliant white maybe you want to paint white a white patch as well on the on the piece of paper and stick the white and the blue on the ceiling also on your walls as well um, your walls are predominantly going to be white in the scheme we've, we've left the color for the ceiling okay the colors are for the ceiling the walls are predominantly white because we want to keep them white and light now there will be one wall one wall an accent wall can you see at the very back there we've got an accent wall in the kitchen and that's in tiles okay so if you find that um, you want to do one wall in color it will be the same color that you put on the ceiling you're going to put on the accent wall so okay so you're going to put the same colour on the ceiling as you are going to put on the accent wall. Okay, so just so you're aware what we're going to do with that. Same thing, you're going to paint it on paper and then you're going to stick that paper on the wall as an accent wall, accent colour wall. Okay, when I was decorating my home, I just got a piece of the wallpaper and I stuck the wallpaper on the wall. These walls were not white before I painted everything white and so I, stuck, uh, I actually did the same painted a piece of paper white and I stuck it on the wall as well so I knew what to do with it thank you one minute excuse me <coughs> um just have a little cough there uh sorry about that sorry about that I just had to pause it a minute was why I had a little cough really I don't think you want to watch me coughing away um so now we understand um what we're doing and how we're going to keep our homes looking um, presentable and fresh while we're putting our scheme together. Okay, so we're going to paint onto paper and stick the paper on the walls. We are not going to paint directly onto the walls, okay, because we do get an awful lot in those Mac pots and it's very tempting. You don't want to do that because it'd be discouraging, okay? So, that being said, um, with these, uh, and you once you've gathered all of your items together and you've gone to the stores okay a great thing you can do when you go to the stores find out if these furniture items number one if they're on the shop floor if you can purchase them if you wish if you can purchase them directly from the shop floor because that means that number one it cuts down your lead time but number two also, you usually can get it at a discounted price. And sometimes they'll give it to you up to 50% off in some cases. Or you can ask them when their sales are, when it comes to these items, okay? And then maybe you can purchase them in the sales. So that's another way to find out. And sometimes they have a clearance section on their websites. So it's always good to look in the clearance section and to see if they have these items in the clearance section. So that's another way to go with this. Now this item of furniture here, which is the main item of furniture, that is actually a loose cover piece. Um, one of the things I would say, and I would recommend because it's a loose cover sofa, um, I would, if you can, um, order two covers, okay? So then one, whilst one cover is off and being laundered, then the other cover can be on, on your sofa now there's two ways to launder your uh, loose cover sofa either you take it to the dry cleaner which is always the best best way the dry cleaner please get it dry cleaned or you can take it to a laundry mat okay because they have the bigger machines you don't want to try and squeeze that into your conventional domestic um, washing machine it is not designed for something as large as a loose cover that will come off a sofa like this okay so you go to a laundry mat 
Now, the only um, drawback of going to a laundry mat um, is that sometimes there's shrinkage. You don't want to avoid shrinkage. So it means when you're putting it back onto your sofa, your cover, you're going to have to put it on while it's damp. Okay, you're going to put it on while it's still damp so you can stretch it over your sofa. So I would always recommend please dry clean it and then there's no um, there, there's no possibility of there being any shrinkage as well. Okay, so that's a good idea. And also when you're purchasing these items of furniture, the store that you purchase it from will offer you fabric protection. Now, fabric protection is not just insurance, it's where they will come out to your property and they will clean it in situ. Yes, clean it in situ. And in some places, they will even insure you against any rips, tears, burns, anything like that. And they will, uh, they will repair it as well. So that it may sound like an extra cost, but it's worth it. So that's something I'm giving you. Please, if you can, um, get the insurance where it's they give you fabric protection, where they will come into your home and they will clean your sofa in situ. And also, uh, they will um, also repair it. Uh, but that they usually take it away and repair it and bring it back to you. So that's part of your insurance. And usually it's not really that much that much more money but it's peace of mind that you don't have to be so precious about your new furniture once it's put into your home okay so that's an important thing to do and then there's some really old-fashioned things now this is a country interior so it won't look that old-fashioned in your home okay arm caps arm caps are where you get an additional um piece of made um, what goes over the arms the arms are where they get the dirtiest okay and so it's an additional piece of fabric which is tailored to the arm of your sofa and also to the arm of your armchair as well and they can make arm caps in the same identical fabric to be slotted over the arms of your sofa so that's a really good thing to do because that will cut down on the cleaning of your sofa and you can pop those into your domestic washing machine wash them then put them back on and also as well like with the loose cover where you have a spare set of loose covers uh, you can have a spare set of arm caps made as well so that's great and that just increases the longevity of your sofa as well and cuts down on the wear and tear so that's a good idea and also you may decide as well with this sofa if you get two loose covers made you may decide yes I'll have an oatmeal cover but maybe I'll get a uh, one that's in the forest green as well so you may get a forest green cover that would look beautiful as well you might get a forest green cover or you may decide to go for a pattern cover um, that's the same as the as these chairs here so you may go for a patterned one on the sofa or you may go for a forest green or you may go for the blue so it's a top, up to you so if you have two covers you can choose a color for the other one as well so you may decide that's my summer um, loose cover and I have a winter loose cover so um, so you have basically giving yourself almost two sofas in one so that's a really good idea to do and it's well worth doing if you have the finances to do that now I would say do that because you give yourself versatility and you can change it um, according to how your lifestyle evolves and, and your story evolves as well so that's a great idea to do um, with these sofas here these are what I call snugglers and so I have put those in uh, a beautiful turquoise uh, velour a velvet a, blunt, uh, a sort of um, uh, a deep pile um, sort of velvet um, um, covering for these and so that's what I've used for those now they are fitted covers because velvet except for the back cushion and the seat cushions they generally um, don't get removed but as I say again get arm caps made for your snugglers as well and then you can zip off the back cushions and the seat cushions and get those dry cleaned okay so you can get those dry cleaned but as well have the fabric protection on those because they can be somebody can come to your home and clean those in situ and um, if you live in a place where somebody cannot come to your home to clean it in situ because you're far away on an estate like the Ortegas um, 
then usually what they can do they can um they can give you a kit so you can have your own fabric protection kit and that's something that you can have and you can um sort of do spot cleaning yourself to keep it um at a, a, a fantastic standard okay so that's something that you can definitely do yourself um so as i said with this once you've got this and you've decided whether you're going to go full diy or part diy part trade um the next thing you need to do is to find out from all of your suppliers how long it will take for the items to arrive in your home for them to be delivered you want to know number one are they in stock and how long it will take for it to be delivered okay in stock and how long delivered if it's out of stock and they say it's going to be out of stock for two weeks and it's going to take them two weeks to deliver it that means it's not going to land into your home for four weeks two weeks out of stock then two weeks for it to land into your home so once you know when things are going to arrive make the notes remember what i said i put notes on on the back on, on um at the side of things so I will put how long things take, if it's out of stock, in stock, when it's going to be delivered, put the dates on there. Then you can start project managing this yourself and then you can get a timeline, okay? That's important for you to get the timeline for it. So you've got all your samples together and then you know now how long everything will take to be delivered to your home. Then you know um, how long it's going to take you depending on if it's going to be all done for yourself or 50-50 with trade on yourself, etc. Or if you're going to hand this all over to a designer or it could be you handing it over to a building contractor and they usually have um, a project manager to manage this for you, then they'll, they'll be able to put the scheme together for you within two to three weeks. So for two to three weeks, you can share, you can clear your timetable and you'll be able to produce this in two to three weeks. And that I think is fantastic. Now, if you're going to do this all yourself, this is the order in which you do it in, okay? The first thing you're going to do you're, you are going to um, you're going to uh, get all your electrics, your recess lights put into the ceilings, okay? Recess lights put into the ceilings, and then you're going to paint your ceiling. Then you're going to paint your walls and all the trims, etc. You know the window trims, the skirting boards, etc. You so you so the all the lightings are going lights going to be fitted, and then you're going to paint the ceilings, uh, paint the walls, and paint all the trims, and then you're going to get the floor done. Then you're going to fit the floor. Then the floor is done last. Once the floor is done, then you have all your floor, all your furniture delivered and put in place, okay? So that's the carpet, the, you put your rug down, then you, put, then you put all your furniture in place, okay? Ceiling, lighting, um, uh, in case they need to chase any lights through so the plaster will need to come and do work so the lighting gets fitted first and then you mask that off and then you paint all your ceiling paint the walls okay once you've painted all the walls and all the trims then you get the flooring done once the flooring is put in place then you put all your rugs down and then you put the furniture on it then you're done okay so it's um it doesn't sound complicated because it really isn't. It's all just about planning. The most important thing is this. This is what I call your working mood board. Once you've gathered all your samples together and you can see everything, you've got your uh, paper on the wall, on the ceiling, stuck down with masking tape, you can see, you get an idea of how it's going to look. You clear your schedule in order to be able to start implementing this. Like I say, if you're going to do it yourself, it can take between two to three months um, because everybody has a work, um, they're working on it themselves. Um, and if you're going to bring trade in, you can probably do it with, uh, with under two months. You can bring this, if you're going to bring part trade and part DIY, if you're going to do it 50-50, then allow roughly around about two months to be able to put this together. And if it's going to be all trade, they can knock this whole thing out um, within uh, two to three weeks, two, three weeks. So that's how you put all of this together and then you're done. So um, I will say uh, to you that this would be um, a life-changing interior for you, 
for yourself and for your family, whether this is your family room or whether it's your open plan living space, this is a life changing space for you. And I would say that this would definitely change your story and change your life. Now, if you decide that this is going to be a purely your living space for your whole family, then um, you will need to go to the uh, the dining section to be able to complete this scheme and to be able to do the dining area and the kitchen area for this scheme to be able to complete the whole of that. Um, if you want to just do the living space first and then later on, um, if you go get the consultation for the uh, living uh, for the dining and the uh, kitchen area, that's fine. You can definitely do that because this uh, family area or this living area, once that's complete, it will just look amazing. And I would say go ahead and do that because you will love it. Absolutely love it. It will be a fantastic fantastic transforming transformation for your home and for your living room and for your life okay um one of the things i would say to you please watch these videos over and over again because every time you watch the video you learn something new or you think okay i didn't quite understand um what uh, nadia was meaning when she was saying that um, but now when I've, I've listened to her again, I understand what Nadia means now and um, and I can implement that. OK, or maybe there's things that I don't remember her saying that before because you've watched it two or three times now. And now you picked up um, something different that you sort of skirted over and, you, and, and things come and more and more crystal clear. OK, so I'd say watch the videos over and over again just to get more clarity before you're ready to go. Um, once you're ready to go, please do something for me and I'd love you to do this for me. If you can, send me a message via the website. Let me know how this process has gone for you and how it has transformed your life, if only by a little bit or even it might be a major transformation, okay, in your journey of transforming um, your story and changing your life, okay? And if you can, attach any pictures of the finished. If you want to do the before, and then the after, that's entirely up to you. Um, if you will give me your permission in your little email to share this on the website, that would be wonderful. I'd love to share it with uh, viewers. If you don't want it to be shared, that's fine. I'll just keep it in my private file. And, uh, and that would be a great reference for me as well. And it would be really encouraging. And I'll send you a little thank you message back. OK, so... Um, Having said that, um, as I say, this is a wonderful journey that you will go on in transforming your story. And uh, especially once you've got your working mood board up and running as well, um, to be able to hand this over either to an interior designer to do the whole thing for you, or you use it as you're going to project manage it yourself, where you do part trade and part DIY, or you do it all yourself. Um, whichever way you decide to go, I know that this will be transformational for you. I've enjoyed putting this consultation together for you and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this works, for, works out for you. Thank you very much for choosing to have a consultation today and I wish you all the best. This is Nadia Strachan, your design consultant. Thank you.